Hey there, I'm Siobhan from The Fun Crew. Today we'll be covering Finals 2 from the Highlander Summit Signature Event this weekend in New Jersey. We see teams 16099A Overclock and 2145V, the Pink Swirly Unicorns, on the Red Alliance. They face off against 2054 Pika Pika and 1168 Victory on the Blue Alliance. In this match, we'll be seeing how teams can come back from such large deficits after the autonomous period and how fast they can manipulate their match into their favor. So you're going to want to look out for the quick descores and how fast those control zones can change, especially in those long rows. It was a pretty intense match with close scores and a really unpredictable outcome. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Let's start out here in Autonomous. Team Overclock down here in the bottom left and Team 1168A in the top right have pretty similar autonomous routines where they go for the middle balls in the center of the field and then go for the match loader. It works out pretty well for 1168A as they're able to get that middle control zone. However, their alliance 2054V tries to score in the middle control zone but it doesn't work as well for them as 2145V is able to guarantee that one. As we exit Autonomous here, we see that the Blue Alliance has both of these control zones, which is a pretty big advantage for them, but we see that the ruling of the Autonomous ends up as a tie. So either team is on the defense, on the offense here, and we see that right away as Blue Alliance tries to spring out. In my opinion, if I was the Blue Alliance, I would just stay where I was and make sure that I'm able to keep these control zones in the long goal, since they're worth such vital points. But we see the opposite here as 1168A scrambles to the other side, and in that time, Overclock is able to get those match loads from their match load station and score them in that long goal in the bottom. As they score the, them in the long goal, they're able to regain the control zone and still score even more, while 1168A just tries to de-score this middle goal. Now, the Blue Alliance is pretty much on the defensive. Even though they had the control zones at the beginning of the match, they're starting to lack in some areas, especially in these middle and as the, especially in these middle goals and the long goal and bottom. 2145V is pretty much just contending with, with 1168A for that middle goal, but their alliance overclock comes in to defend and make sure that 2145V has the opening to descore up here in the top control zone. In the time that the blue alliance is distracted by the descoring in the top corner, overclock is able to pretty much clear out the full goal in the bottom which gives them a huge advantage as they won't have to worry as much about getting those blue balls rammed into the control zone. In that time, the blue lines is able to re regain control of that middle goal, which isn't as important to, the, to them because remember that the autonomous was still a tie, so anyone's on the offensive. It's looking like a stalemate here as both alliances have a long goal control bonus and the red alliance is starting to begin to go for that bottom control bonus down here. And as 2145V descores that whole middle goal, it's almost like the red, red is at an advantage, even though we saw the blue alliance have such an advantage going into the driver control. And here we see that um, 2054V 20, tries to score, but it looks like something malfunctions and the defense from overclock really affects them. They're only able to get one ball in that bottom long goal. However, they still have this long goal at the top, which is going to be the majority of the points. They try to double park, but it doesn't really work out for them. And on the other hand, 2145V gets the single park, which is pretty vital because without trying to double park, that red alliance is able to get guarantee at least a couple points, while the blue alliance isn't able to get any. Remember that the red alliance also has this long goal in the bottom, which is pretty vital because those extra points when you're when you're at such a stalemate for the long goal control zones and when you're at a stalemate for the autonomous bonuses add a, lo a lot of pressure. I think it's pretty interesting how the blue alliance could have just waited around for the majority of the match seeing as they had that long goal control zones and the autonomous was a tie so it didn't matter as much what they did. But instead they tried to swap positions and go back to and go to the strategy that they thought was right which gave the red alliance a huge opening to start to descore and score those red blocks in this bottom control zone. I think this game is a lot about patience and it's pretty similar to last year in terms of just sitting around in the corner and making sure you're able to guarantee the points, especially the ones that you guaranteed from autonomous. But a lot of teams get impatient and they leave their 
the, the long goals that they've already secured, which gives them a huge disadvantage and makes them scramble around the field. I think a lot of teams also need to put a lot more focus into these middle goals because they kind of go unnoticed, especially because of how low scoring they are and how few blocks even fit in them. But when it comes down to matches like this, where 2v1s on specific long goals become a huge factor, it's really important to guarantee as many points as you can. I think what Blue Alliance tried to do on the bottom, uh, sorry, on the right side of the field with the double park will become really important as points become a lot closer throughout the throughout the season. But I think until we can get consistent double parks, it won't be as necessary. And instead, teams should focus on descoring as much as they can in those last couple of seconds while their opponent tries to park. I think these last second plays that we're seeing throughout the match really show that having agility and fast scoring, fast cycle times is really important and a lot more important than being able to store as many balls as we used to think back at the Mall of America Signature event. This match was pretty fast paced and a little bit intense, so let us know in the comments how you felt that Blue Alliance could have kept their lead from Autonomous. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Fun so that way you can keep up with all our robotics related content. I'm Siobhan and thank you so much for watching Funalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.